Looking forward to this race. Marlow Rowing Club, A crew on the Barcher Station on the far side of your picture in Cardinal Red. Attention. And the men from Oslo, Norway. No strangers to Henry Regatta. Also rowing with Red Blades. But they're in a yellow Empaca shell from Germany. And the men from Marlow are in a white Felipe shell. So easy to tell them apart. Yeah, both crews off cleanly there, which is really important to get into, get out, get into pace. NSR Norway lost in the final of 2019 this event to Sydney Rowing Club. They've also been in the final of the Thames Challenge Cup in 2018. And uh, two of this crew, Bjorkland and Sarabowski from the Norwegians, the two man and the stroke man were in that crew that lost to Sydney. So they're really quality crew, these men from Oslo. So we go back live and you can see this is a quality of God oh dear, look at that race. So that Marlow on the right of your picture, maybe just a little bit up. Yeah, they've definitely got the advantage there, but there's not much in it there. It's just, you know, being composed, standing in your boat. And I always love this about Henley because you don't really, when you've got foreign crews, you've got no kind of pre idea about where they're quick, where they're slow, where to move. Um, so you have to be flexible when you're racing especially at Henley with these crews that you know nothing about. This is Marlowe's top crew. They beat Quinton easily. They had a tight race against Tyne yesterday by one and a quarter lengths. And uh, it is nip and tuck between them. Marlowe maybe just having a barge. There's a lot of swell and wash coming by there. How does that affect the crews, Mark? Yeah, that just it makes it really unstable and it's who can deal with that best. Um, and that's really makes it challenging, especially if you're the moving crew. Um, and it doesn't upset you, you keep the momentum. If you're the crew that feels that the other crew is starting to lose touch, things can become quite heavy if you kind of catch the water, you know, miss the entrance to the water of actually picking up the actual spoon in the water. So it's, it, it varies depending on you know, what crew can deal with the conditions. And, you know, we are open to the elements at Henley and that's what also makes it really special. So you can see how close it is. Oslo on the left of your picture, Marlow on the right of your picture. This is the heat of the Wifold Challenge Cup. It is going down to the wire. I had the men from Oslo just marginally ahead, and I was thinking Matt Zaraboski in the stroke seat. Well, there's the bowman, Sven Ole Molsted Nicholson, and uh, he has competed in Henley in many years, the 30-year-old. They've got a lot of experience in the Oslo crew. And I would think that experience might serve them well in the pressure race now. Marlow just battling for all they're worth. This is Marlow's top crew. They are not going to give this race up lightly, even though they're fractionally down at the moment. This is a great race the Thursday morning. <laughs> Gee, wow. <laughs> there we come onto the enclosures. Oslo have the slight advantage, the crew on the left, but Marlow Rowing Club are battling back, battling back. That is the bowman of Marlow, Leon Taylor. 83 kilograms of him in the bow seat, putting everything on the end of the blade that he can. Max Hurden in the two seat, who learned to row at Ship Lake College. Matthew Chan anchoring the boat from the three seat. What has he got now? And Joel Evans, a stroke. Lots going to be asked of him in this last part of the race, Mark. And this is a moment when you start looking at your teammates in your crew, you know, what more can we give? They're just moving over to the booms there, Mark. They just want to make sure they don't get too close, because as you start to focus on, you know, going through the gears, you don't want to start worrying about steering. That's the bowman in the Marlow boat who is steering. And uh, Leon Taylor has got to keep clear of the, the bows. There's the Marlow boat. Norway just had that lead. The experience of Oslo, they're coming through. You can hear the shouts of the stewards. Enclosure as the crews go past them. Marlow at the top of your picture. Oslo nearest to the camera. And it is Oslo who have a slight lead at the moment. This is such a tight race, Mark. Wow, this is the fist fight. This is what we love, the dual race and the Henley right to the line. So we come up to the finish line. Ahead of me, I can just see Oslo in front, but Marlo are coming back. Oslo in front, Marlo coming back. We come up to the finish, and it is Oslo just by a deck, by a canvas, by a couple of metres, whichever margin you like. It won't matter to the Oslo men because they have won, but look at what it's taken out of them. Matt Sarabowski, the Oslo stroke is over his blade, the joiner in Carpentry Apprentice. Look at that margin, wow. That is 
That is just one metre. What about that margin, Mark? That's it. It's so tight, and that, that's a year's training for that margin. And when you think about every day, every session, those are the battles that you want to win when it comes down to that last few strokes. But what an incredible race. You know, it went from Marlow leading to Ozzo taking the lead. There was a little bit of, you know, challenging conditions there to deal with. There was a bit of everything in that race.